The next big topic we want to talk about is called an inner product, although it's also referred to as a dot product. And in fact, I'll quite often just refer to it as a dot product, mainly because it's just slightly easier to say. But the whole idea of what an inner product is, is that we take u dot v, the inner product of u and v, where these two things are vectors of the same size, and we're going to get, say, it's u transpose times v. So for example, let's do a three-dimensional case here. Let's say I have the vectors 3, negative 2, 5, and I wanted to dot that with 4, 1, negative 3. We're going to take the transpose of the first, which is going to turn it into a row, times the second. My dimensions line up. I've got a 1 by 3 times a 3 by 1, which is going to end up giving us a 1 by 1. Now, even though technically it's a 1 by 1 matrix, we typically leave off the matrix and just say, hey, it's going to be a scalar. So we pair them up. We take 3 times, neg 3 times 4 plus negative 2 times 1 plus 5 times negative 3. So 12 minus 2 minus 15 is negative 5. In fact, because of the way this works, we actually often don't even bother thinking about it in terms of the matrix. We just say, I'm going to multiply the first components, multiply the second components, multiply the third components, and add them together. Now, there are certain properties of an inner product. First of all, it has to be commutative. U dot V has to be V dot U. It also needs to be distributive. So if I take the dot product of U and V and with a vector of W, then it's the same as taking W dotted with each of the individual things. And putting that together with the first property, this would technically be a right distributive property, but because it's commutative, a left distributive property would work as well. If we're multiplying by a scalar, it kind of doesn't matter where in the process we multiply it. We can multiply the first vector times that constant. We can multiply the second vector times that constant. Or just take the dot product and multiply the product times the, the constant. And the third one's interesting. If we dot a vector with itself, then it always has to be greater than or equal to 0. And the only way it can equal 0 is if we've got the 0 vector. All these properties are easy to show if we just start thinking about what they're doing on components. I want to mention, though, that while we're only going to be focusing on this particular inner product, actually anything that satisfies these four properties can be called an inner product. And sometimes there are reasons for using other inner products other than the sort of default dot product one. Thinking about what would happens when we dot two vectors together helps us think about what if we had a, and dotted a vector with itself. Well, one way to think about this is actually geometrically. Let's say I've got a vector and let's keep it positive. Let's say I've got a vector something like 5, 3. And so I can say this is a vector going to there. And what happens if I dot that vector with itself? Well, that vector dotted with itself would be 5 times 5 plus 3 times 3. 5 squared plus 3 squared, or 34. I really want to focus on that second one, 5 squared plus 3 squared. 
Well, that sounds an awful lot like the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, if I kind of make a triangle out of this, this side is length 5, this side is length 3, this side is the square root of a squared plus b squared is the square root of 34, the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. Because of this thing, because of this idea that we get out of the Pythagorean theorem, we actually will say that for any vector, no matter how many components, we do that kind of thing. We dot the vector with itself and take the square root, and we'll say that's the length, or more often we'll call it the norm. Because when you start talking about things in more than three dimensions, length doesn't make sense, but norm is kind of just a generalization of that. Along those lines, then, we can say that the distance between u and v, again, let's kind of draw a picture here. If I've got a vector u and I've got a vector v, u minus v is a vector here. So what we can say is that the magnitude of that, the norm of that, or again the length of that, is how far apart those two vectors are from each other. So I'll just do a two-dimensional example. If I had a vector u is 5, 3, and a vector v is 2, 7, the distance between u and v is the norm of subtracting them. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. So the norm is the square root of the dot product of this with itself. 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. The square root of 25 is 5. A bunch of different ideas here, but they're all pretty simple. All based on this dot product. There's some basic properties which are pretty much what you'd expect. You take the square root of a vector dotted with itself to get its length, and then you take the norm of the distance, the norm of the difference to get the distance between them.